and I'm here to talk to you about our site and what we're doing. So our site is the Hunter Wetland Centre. We are on a freshwater wetland. So basically what we're doing is to stop the wild foxes and cats from getting in. So what we have here is a freshwater wetlands and we're basically protecting the wetland birds that we have that come in on our site. Basically spoonbills, egrets, magpie geese and freckled ducks. So our aim is basically to keep the predators out. We've been building a fence to stop that. And yeah, I'll pass it over to Richard to talk about safety. Hi guys, my name's Richard. I'm the uh, supervisor here for our team and a great team they are. As Missy said, we're, we're building our fence. Uh, we've got this new fence we're building here. We've got about 500 metres of that to do in, and we've got about three kilometres. We're working in the Green Army, of course. So, um, uh, safety stuff that we have to wear hat and our hat and our hats, uh, you know, long clothes, boots, uh, etc. We especially focus on our eyewear. Uh, we're working with wire. Uh, wire can flick around, so we have to make sure that that our eyewear is on at all times. Also, we're doing some hammering at times, putting star pickets in. Um, so ear protection is is an, a, a, a another focus whenever we're doing that that job. Okay. So we also have sun, we have insects, we have snakes. So all all the usual safety stuff um, that we go through. Uh, but you will go through that. I'm just reminding you that um, here is no different to anywhere else. Okay. I'm going to hand you over to Jasper now. He's going to talk about the design of the fence. Hi, I'm Jasper, and I'm going to talk to you guys about the design of the fence. We're building a, star, a strainer post and star picket fence. We're using 40 millimeter netting. We're also attaching floppy tops and foot skirts to prevent burrowing and climbing over the fence. These come out uh, 450 millimeters just to stop any climbing. And we've got the foots which stretch and are attached to the bottom of all the fence and come out 500 millimeters and stop any boxes from burrowing into the wetlands. And here's Julian to talk about the stainer post and stuff. Hey guys, I'm Julian. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the strainer post and the star pickets. As you can see here, this is an example of a strainer post. And it's been dug into the ground about a metre. And for its foundation, we'll use concrete or rapid set. And if you come over here, you can see this is a star picket and it's been struck into the ground or hemmed into the ground at least two foot or um, anyway. And um, so we will use the the whole 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 rammer. rammer. And um, so someone will be up here striking it from above and and uh, that will the star pickets will be placed. Uh, at the end of the stave, which comes off the main post, and that just basically gives the fence its structure. And yeah, so I'll pass you over to Richard. Now, Sean was supposed to be here, but he can't be, so he was going to talk about our wires. Now, wires we're going to use wires to support the netting, so we've got five wires uh, one, two, three, four, five. That it's um, it's high tensile fencing wire. Uh, it's two and a half mils diameter. Okay, attached to the top and the bottom. So the top and the bottom are 1.8 meters apart to take our our netting. Uh, we use gripple uh, gripples to hold the uh, wires together. And if you come up this way, um, I'll show you what what we're using. We're using gripples, which is a a uh, a mechanism of tying two wires together. The wire will move one way through the gripple and not the other. We're also using uh, common uh, wire tensioners. So you can see here, uh, just put my glasses on. And whilst whenever we're using wire, wire under tension, um, in case it breaks and snaps and, and flicks back, we also we make sure that we have got a, uh, at least a five meter radius. Of people, of, of people clear um, from the wire itself.
as you can see here, if you come in close, uh, this is a gripple. So the wire can pass one way through it, but it can't go back the other. So if you have one wire coming this way, one, one wire coming this way. And as the wires come, the retention uh, can remain on the wire. This is a pair of fencing strainers. So we can clip the to either end of the wire and these move and walk up the chain. And as we do that, we create tension in the wire. Okay, we can walk, walk it up until the tension is here. Then we can come up to the gripple and pull them through and the wire slide through. And when we release the, the tension from the, from the strainers, then, uh, then that stays in place. We then clip these and tie them off so it's nice and tight and neat. Um, so that's our wires. This, this little section here is a bridge we're going over. That's why you see the timber below. Uh, but we'll have the wires above and below. We'll, we'll, we'll attach with uh, new nails to the, um, the, our netting to the, uh, to the timber frame of, of the bridge here. Okay, I'm now going to pass over to James here, who's going to talk about the netting okay. and how we attach I'm James, talk about netting and clips. So the netting we use comes in dolls such as this one. So the first thing we have to do is unravel it to the length we need. And once we've got it to the length we need, we cut it with clippers and we all get together to lift it onto the fence, which is quite heavy. And then once it's on the fence, someone will use one of these bad boys to clip it. The red ones. Come on, I'll show you. Ba boom, clipped your fence. That's it. And now I'll pass it over to Jamie. Uh, hello. Um, so yeah, um, even though the fence is like 1.8 meters, there's still a bit of an issue with cats and foxes climbing over it or just jumping over it. Um, so to prevent that from happening, we just put another layer of netting up above. It's our 600 mil, and yeah, that just prevents them from being able to jump over. Um, yeah, and then to do that, we just we just clip it onto the fence, and then as you can see. We are getting these blue fencing wires, four millimeter, and uh, sort of clip that on. Pull it so there's a bit of tension. And yeah, it's a bit awkward because it's the last one. But a bit of a demonstration for you. Good. That simple, really. Um, yeah, so here's Nathan. Still, uh, hey guys, my name's Nathan. I'm here today to talk to you about the final component of fence construction, which is which is the footing. And then I'll do the wrap up, and that'll be that. Okay, if you want to follow me, take a trip down and see the footing. We put it in in order to make sure that foxes and cats can not dig underneath get into the sanctuary we are constructing. So just a little bit further and we'll be able to see the footing. Okay, so we use galvanized blue coated wire netting at the bottom of the fence and we clip it with clips and peg it with pegs in order to make sure it can't move. And then once that's done, we go and pick up any loose wire or off cutting anything that's on the fence to make sure that vehicles, equipment and animals are not harmed in this process. We've also got to make sure our equipment is properly stored and washed up for use. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We look forward to hearing your Blue Jeans presentation soon. And we'll now pass it on to any questions you may have for the team. If you want to follow me? Okay, guys, that's it from us. Thanks very much for, for watching. As, as... Thanks, thanks, heaps, guys. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Um, everybody, just give them a big uh, give it up for the, for the Hunter Wetlands team. Big thumbs up. Nice, nice work. Um, if you do have questions, um, two options are if you can send to it as a chat, then uh, you could ask the, ask the question through a chat. 
Um, if I see that your microphone is off, then um, that might suggest that you're there. Now, Tim, I can see that you're there and you have you have got your camera off and your microphone on. So um, if you, yep, self-muted. Um, and if you bring your camera on, then you'll be back. Um, I have a couple of questions if, if no one else is ready to go with any. So um, first thing, though, is to rouse on Jasper. Jasper, you forgot to put your eye, your eye protection on when you did that little bit of wiring. Every single time. Don't ever forget it, okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want it to, you want it to look good for the camera, I know. I know. But, yeah, okay, just... Keep keep your mind on the job, not on not on your fame. We'll forgive you this time, just this one time, okay? Um, a couple of questions. Um, well, first one I guess is that that was actually really good. I mean, you guys obviously know your stuff about the fencing. I can see that um, you know the the, the speed with which. That, that clip went on to the, to the wire. Um, you've probably done a few hundred of those, maybe a few thousand. Um, who actually gave you the training in doing the fencing? Oh, Richard. <laughs> yeah, I've done uh, a little bit of fencing, not a huge amount. Um, but we learned on the job as this is the second team. We've had another team the last six months, so this is the second team. So um, we did a bit of experimentation and a bit of design work, and we looked at other fences. Um, around um, and spoke with people basically and uh, and worked it out as we went along and we've had some good suggestions from some of the participants from my last team and this team about how it works. So it's um, a bit of trial and error, but it seems to be coming along okay. Fantastic. So it sounds like what you're doing is, um, you know, you, you've got some basic instructions of here, go ahead and do that. Um, and you've done a bit of research to work out how to do it most effectively. Um, Richard has led that process, and as well as the participants, you guys yourselves, have actually helped to refine that. So, um, yeah, give yourselves a little pat on the back for um, improving the process. Um, everyone, uh, yeah, there you go, pat, pat on the back, well done. Um, yeah, it, when you do fences, I think, um, well, uh, Sam's team has been doing some dune fencing as well. Have you had any experts come down to tell you how to do it? Um, no, we've had um, mainly good comments. Um, no one's cast a critical eye along it yet. I'm sure maybe they do uh, in the private, you know, in private, but uh, no one's actually spoken to us about the knot we're using or 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 whatever. There was a, a Facebook. Um, uh, entry put on by Stuart, our CEO here, um, who had a photograph, and the uh, foot wasn't, the footing, the skirting wasn't completed at that time, and he, he, he got some comments on Facebook about, about are you going to have a skirt and, and, and what you're doing. So people are interested and do take note of what's going on, for sure. Yeah, that brings up um, a, a question. I mean, you're in a a fairly urbanised area just on the fringes of uh, Newcastle there and uh, Richard is referring to the Stuart from the Hunter wetlands um, so firstly I guess could you could you tell us a little bit about the the wetland centre and also I assume you guys I don't know if you pointed it out but you're on the outside of the fence so you're in the you're in the suburbs of sort of Walls End at Newcastle the foxes and the cats are on the same side as you and the the good stuff, the the wildlife, um, the native wildlife is on the on the far side. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about the Hunter Wetlands Centre? Want to come through with a bit of history? Now, I don't know, we're, we're very Oops. close to the Ramsar site of uh, of Kuradang Island, and Island. Um, it's actually a, a freshwater wetland. It was originally many years ago a tip. And then um, about 30 years ago, it was a uh, football field. That's right. It got then converted into a football field. And then since then, it's been bought by the uh, by people to create this wetland. So it's a created wetland, really. It's on the edge of the scan over this way. Um, you can see that we've got mangroves here. And just over there is estuary. So that's Ironbark Creek. So um, uh, it is sort of on, on the edge of, of salt marsh and, uh, and mangroves. 
Uh, it's fresh water. It's, um, it was originally a swamp, but it actually has been re recreated in the last 30 years. So it's about 30 years old, um, run by uh, um, public donations and uh, any money they take here and to, to the cafe and, and that sort of thing. A lot of volunteers work here. A lot of people give up their time to, to come and, and do that. A lot of bird watchers come here. Uh, people come walk around. Uh, it's a great place to ride your bike. You can hire bikes here. You can hire canoes here. They can actually go out on the on the estuary and, and row right around. Um, and there's children's playgrounds and those sorts of things. It's also an education centre. So there is actually a, uh, a specific building there for education. So schools come here with um, primary school right through to, um, to senior high school to come and have a look at, at the work that's, that's, that's happening here. So uh, it's a pretty good um, for the Newcastle. Um, yeah, no. Thanks, Richard. Um, and yeah, great. Sounds. I mean, they're a great. Uh, it's a great centre to be part of and to be attached to. So these guys have seen quite a lot of diversity in terms of community interaction with the environment that they're helping. Um, I haven't seen any other questions from any other teams. Does anyone else want to throw a question to these guys? Yes. Uh, coming in from Sam. How you going, Joe? Hey guys, how are you? Uh, just wondering uh, what the buffer zone is around the fencing in terms of removing vegetation so that um, cats and uh, foxes can't get over the fence or potentially climb over. Anyone want to talk about that? Yeah, um, we usually get in there with rakes and matters. Um, it's all right, sort of here, but further down there's a lot of heavy vegetation. And so we basically clear about a metre. Um, sometimes a bit more, um, on both sides of the fence. We just basically remove everything so we can help maintain it. Yeah. yeah that's correct. We need at least a metre on the other side of the fence so we can walk down and clear anything. So anything growing over the fence, growing through the fence, vines, those sorts of things, can, we can do maintenance. So, um, yes, at least a metre both sides. Awesome. Are there, are there any, um, sorry, Joe. I was just gonna just gonna say, and, and we didn't get an introduction from who's on the camera there, but um, there's a little bit of scuffling noise, so you might be moving your hand near the microphone. If you can just try to avoid the scuffling, we'll we'll hear it a bit clearer. Cheers. O over to you again, Sam. So, are there any other uh, sort of eradication programs, or are they baiting or trapping or using any monitoring cameras or anything like that uh, at all, guys, to to monitor the actual uh, pest? Uh, levels in the inside the area? Well, we have had one fox come around recently. He's been travelling around inside and we've been having baits put out for him. So we've got traps and that sort of stuff. And yeah, he's getting uh, sick. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's, he's going all right. He yeah. won't be a problem anymore. There is a... Um, a, uh, a, a baiting program using 1080 baits um, within the park, which is an ongoing thing, which is how they've been controlling uh, the ferals for the moment. It doesn't affect cats so much, mainly foxes and wild dogs, and that will continue. Uh, but once our fence is up and we're completely sealed, hopefully once all the ferals are removed, then, uh, then it'll just be a, um, a monitoring thing to, in case anything gets in and everything should be um, eradicated from within the site. Um, yes, yeah, so that is a, a regular ongoing thing. Um, they have a person on, on site who is their, um, their pest control person. Dave, I don't know what that is, but Dave is a well known around the roundabout. Yeah, any other questions? Can't see anything at this stage. Um, oh, sorry, is that one coming in from Cumberland? Yeah. Um, my question was um, if, if you have any um, issues with public, um, like get angry or whatever that the fence is going up, if you have any interference or stuff like that and how you deal with that. Um, yeah, there are like a lot of public around, like it is a public place. Um, there is a part of the fence is built along uh, residential property. So I think there has been some concern, um, but it's usually 
uh, we personally haven't experienced any of that. So I think Richard might have in the past. We certainly come across regularly come across holes that have been cut in the fence so people can get in here at night or whatever for a reason. Um, but no, our fence is usually built five metres off any boundary, so there's actually a fire break between the, the uh, wetlands and any residential properties, um, which is owned by the wetlands. So our fence is actually not on, actually on the boundary of people's uh, properties. Um, but there have been a couple of comments about it looks a bit like a jail. Um, but I guess to keep um, to keep the ferals out, we need to uh, for this for this design to be uh, as it is. I guess. Thank you. Thank you, and a, and a very relevant question. Uh, well, it like, sounds like we'll sum up there, guys. Um, what what week are you actually in now? 10, 11, something like that, or about halfway through, yeah. About halfway through. So, yeah, you're on the home straight now. Um, most of your training is over and done with. A reminder to all the other teams, if you've got any outstanding training in there, hurry up and get it in. Um, but this is a non-compulsory uh, training activity. It's something that, um, you know, I've thrown out to all teams to do. Richard and these guys have taken up the challenge. So um, yeah, right on guys, gutsy effort to get up in front of the, the camera and to share your story with the rest of the state. Um, so it's it, it also probably helps to embed a bit of the knowledge that you learn things. And when, you, when it comes to trying and explaining it to somebody else, it really beds it into your mind of what am I actually doing and why am I doing this? So, uh, yeah, more power to you guys. Um, if the rest of the teams that have dropped in can uh, give, an give them another visual thumbs up. Way to go. Great presentation. Fantastic. Good luck with the rest of your project, guys. And uh, we'll wind up there. Let yourselves out. See you later. Thanks, Jai. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Take care.